Hello, welcome to another edition of Mike's Tech. Today we have an unboxing and overview video for you. This is an EVGA 500 watt power supply. It's uh, 80 plus. Okay, uh, quick overview of the specifications. Uh, we have 40 amps on the 12 volt rail, uh, 24 amps on the 3.3 volt, 20 amps on the 5 volt, uh, 0.3 amps on the on the negative 12 and 3 amps on the plus 5 VSB. Uh, some other overview of the specifications and it's got a 120 millimeter, 120 millimeter fan uh, active PFC uh, complete protection OCP, OVP, UVP, OPP, SCP and OTP provides 500 watts total at 40 uh, degrees Celsius 3 year warranty meets LOT6 ERP 2013 requirement and of course is Intel Haswell compatible. Okay, uh, let's open it up here for you uh, and give you an overview of exactly what this is about. Okay. You can see. Oh, one more thing here. Sorry. All right. Unboxing for you here. Included, we have a introduction and instruction manual. Installation instructions. Okay. Also, power cord, standard with all PSUs. Okay. Another plastic bag. This is a basic standard power supply. It actually looks a little shorter to me than um, most power supplies, to be honest. So you've got here your on-off switch. It's active PFC, so there is no power switching. Power plug back. Nice honeycomb ventilation. Very nice. Help for exhaust. 120 millimeter fan for nice, quiet operations. Uh, this is what you most likely will see on the side of your kit case if you have a side window and again it lists your uh, all your voltages here so again we have um, let's see if you can see that you got your 12 volt plus 5 volt 3 volt everything else like I said uh, four, most importantly 40 amps on the 12 volt rail plenty of power for a good 500 watt build and let's see cables Take that out. All right. Let's get this out of the way here. Okay. And as for cables, we have a lot of cables, but as you can see, they're sleeved. They're not solid sleeve color so you can see the cabling through it so if you care about that that is something you need to know but it, they're still nice and sleeved to keep them neat and overall looking nice uh, we have here Molex one two three four Molex and a floppy power connector for those that still use a floppy which is very few and far between I'm surprised that's still included but most PSUs still include those. Uh, we have your 20 plus 4 uh, power adapter. This is standard for all motherboards. And uh, just a personal note, and I'm going to mention this anytime I do uh, PSU overviews until I see this change. We don't need, and this is to all power supply, this is not picking on EVGA because almost every power supply company does this, including um, those that are supposedly 
gamers or non-gamers, it doesn't matter, a lot of them are still including your 20 plus 4. We don't need it. All motherboards made that I've dealt with in the past five or more years, at least, if not longer, include uh, 24 pins. And this is just an annoying extra problem when you put it together. I understand it's a standard that most are using, uh, just to be backwards compatible, but we really don't need it, especially once you get um, anywhere 500 watts or up, because if your motherboard still uses 20, you don't need a 500 watt power supply. The odds are you probably can get away with a 300 watt power supply because you're not running very much. So, uh, just a personal note, I'll be very glad to see when the 24 solid becomes standard. Not picky on EVGA. Please understand, um, this is not personal with EVGA. Okay. I actually very much like the power supply. I'm not picking on them personally. I just wish it would change. Anyway, uh, we've got another three SATA power connectors. Another three SATA power connectors for a total of six. Your uh, CPU additional power, you've got, you can either have four or an eight way, depending on which, you, which uh, your motherboard needs. So you've got plenty of power for your motherboard here. And additionally, we have your, uh, for your PCI Express, we've got two um, eight connectors. So we've got six plus two and a six plus two. So this will would definitely be able to handle even some, you know, a good graphics card. Um, matter of fact, I'm not very much mistaken to handle both these. You're probably pushing closer to a 770 or maybe even a 780 as far as uh, graphics cards go. But definitely got the got all the plugs you would need for any single um, any single power. Uh, v, ah, excuse me, all the plugs you'd need for any single uh, GPU setup you're going to be doing. And honestly, at 500 watts, why would you do anything more than a single GPU? So, anyway, that is an overview of this 500 watt power supply. It is a small, compact power supply, but it looks to be very solidly built. It's got a good weight to it. It's not overly heavy, but not overly light. Uh, as you can see, the vent here is not honeycombed, but it does appear to provide plenty of airflow. Uh, nice grid pattern they have here with the EVGA logo and the little plastic. Yep, little plasticky piece comes off here, so it shines really nice. You're not really going to ever see this, but it just it looks nice. It looks very nice. 500 watts. Um, we really don't know what else to say. So there you go. Um, we will install this. I will show you what this looks like installed too, just for a reference point. And thank you for watching. This power supply has been easy to work with. The cables are nice and long. The fan is extremely quiet. This will do great if we ever need to put in a graphics card. And I'm very pleased with it and look forward to using it again.